And if you can, let me invite you to lift yourself, praise the Lord, and let's sing together, if you can.
one stanza. It says, when he shall come with trumpet sound, may I then in him be found. Look at how dressed, thank you Lord, in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. And as we come this morning to bring our gifts unto the Lord, uh, we're making it possible for some more folk to be able to dress in his righteousness and stand faultless before the throne. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these people. We thank you for your provision for us. We thank you for the opportunity just to bring back to you. Bless gifts and givers, we pray in Jesus' name. Personnel, com personnel committees, etc., etc., church treasurer, let me name them, brotherhood director, uh, and all of those fine people. If you just come uh, down to the front here so that folk can see who you are and kind of identify who you are, so that as we go through this year, if there is a need in a particular area, they'll know who to reach out to. Uh, praise the Lord, I was going to say something else, but this can be recorded right now. So come on, don't let me have to beg you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. if there are some specific prayer requests that you brought on your heart this morning that you would like to share with us so that we can share uh, those with you. Would you just take a moment to do that, please? And let me get you started by sharing with you <clears throat> some information uh, that I have. Uh, last Sunday morning, uh, Sister Valerie shared with us uh, uh, the situation with Sister Lauren Law, who is the wife of a former deacon of this congregation, 
I had the opportunity to speak with Lauren uh, yesterday evening, afternoon. Uh, she says she is feeling better, but she's still uh, way in the woods physically. And she uh, copied your prayers and grateful for your continued prayers. Um, Sister Alethea Tate uh, was admitted to the hospital on Thursday evening. Uh, she is doing much better, anticipated going home today, but Larry just called to inform me that the doctors say they need to keep her for another couple of days uh, because the readings on whatever they read in her situation is not acceptable to them. Uh, so pray for Alethea and Larry uh, that she will have patience to, to wait on the Lord. And as I shared with you earlier, um, Sister Jackson uh, had to take her mother to the ER this morning. So pray for those. Are there other specific requests that we need to be mindful of? Yes, Sister Nell. I would just like to, like to thank the church for their prayer. And I'd just like to ask you all to continue to uh, pray for me because I have uh, some real issues that I need to pray for. And I Yes, uh, Brother Tony. Uh, yes, uh, good morning. Um, uh, one of the Southside members, all of the Southside members, I'd like to uh, lift the Coxon family in prayer as they lost, uh, Andrew Coxon lost their father. Okay, all right. Did I see your hand, George? Yes. Um, uh, I just want to say, uh, continue praying for my, my nephew, who I've been asking for prayers. He's had some, he's had some issues with his liver. Uh, God's good. Uh, he, he was sent home last week. Continue praying for him. You know he's going to have long struggles with his liver issues. So continue praying for him. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. And you. Um, asking you for a, a crowd of mercy. Uh, Thursday, uh, Joanne Tyson. Okay. Pray for him. Okay. Pray for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, thank you for the privilege of gathering in this place and sharing our concerns. You knew everyone before we even brought them to you. Lord Jesus, there are some uh, today who are concerned about physical healing. Thank you, you are still the great healer. You can speak a word and it is done. And we thank you for that. Uh, Lord, from a selfish perspective, we would love to tell you how to run your business. But from a broader perspective, Lord, we know that uh, your will is not always coinciding with our wills. And we pray that we may be able to come to that point where we are able to say like your son, thy will be done. Uh, Lord, there are some who are struggling with uh, grieving. You, you promised never to leave us alone. You said that you'd send the paraclete to walk alongside us. Yes. And, and, and Lord, I pray that you will be to everyone who hurt this morning all that they need to be. A, a, a husband, a wife, a mother, father, aunt, uncle, 
brother, sister, whatever that situation is, Lord, be to us that. Comfort us in a way that only you can do it. Lord Jesus, for all of the other requests that we may not be able to enumerate them one by one, you know them. And we're just claiming your promise that you will minister to them according to your riches and glory and in a way that will bring honor and glory to your name. We thank you for every man and every woman standing in front of this uh, podium this morning. Lord, they have made a commitment to serve you in particular areas of ministries through this church. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you will give them the courage to stand up, to step out, to speak forth whenever that opportunity arises. And we pray, oh God, that because of their commitment to you and their commitment to this church, that your kingdom will be advanced through their leadership. Lord, thank you for that. We pray that we may not be ashamed of what you have called us to do, but that we will stand forth and speak out in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, cover them with your Holy Spirit uh, and do them with your power. Uh, help them to understand that your strength is their strength. Lord Jesus, I pray that we will, we will understand that you are greater than everything that is going on around us uh, during these days. And help us, Lord Jesus, that we will speak forth, we will step out, we will witness, we will share. Uh, we'll just glorify you everywhere and every time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these people. And we pray that you will bless not only them, but bless this congregation through them. Lord, we love you so much. We praise you, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
If you brought your Bibles, let me invite you uh, back again to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. <clears throat> Now let me bring you up to speed and to begin to read at verse 11. A um, little girl in Syria went to her master and said unto her, Would to God that my master, Naaman, was in Samaria, because if he were there, the prophet would heal him. The king of Syria set up Naaman with an entourage and sent him over to the king of uh, Samaria. Uh, Samir the king of Samaria said, what's going on here? This man wanted to uh, uh, pick a fight with me. Uh, Elisha sent word over to the king and said to him, send Naaman over to me. Verse 8 said, uh, that, uh, that and let him come now and he shall know that there is a God or a prophet in Israel. So Naaman shows up at Elisha's door with his entourage and Elisha didn't even give him the respect to come out and see him. He sent a servant and said to him, Go dip yourself in the river Jordan seven times, and you will be clean. Verse 11 picks up this way. Naaman was angry. He went away and said, I thought that he would at least come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover my leprosy. Are not Abana and Pfeiffer rivers of Damascus better than all of the waters uh, <clears throat> in Israel? Men are washing them and be clean. So he turned and went away in anger. His servants came near to him and spoke in his ears and said to him, Master, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? Now how rather now when he said unto you go wash and be clean. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. His flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. He was clean. And he returned uh, to the man of God and all of his company and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all of the earth but in Israel. Now therefore, I beg you, uh, take a blessing from me, would you? But, but he, Elijah said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will not receive anything and urge him to take it. But he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to your servant to a, a mule burden of earth? For your servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. And in this thing, the Lord pardon your servant, uh, that when my master goes into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he leaned on my hand, uh, I bow myself in the house of Rimmon. When I bow down myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardon your servant in, in this thing. And he said unto him, Elijah said unto him, go in peace. So he departed from him a little ways. Amen. Remember last week I told you, I'm thinking about seven dots in a monastery. I came to New Jersey in September of 1974. And I heard a lot about New Jersey beaches. 
And you know I love the Lord. So I decided that I would visit the New Jersey beaches. I went on and bought, bought me some brand new swim trunks, got myself ready to go in the water. I drove down to the beach and got, uh, when I got there, I, I said to myself, what is this? <laughs> what, what is this? Uh, the, the sand is brown. The, the water, you, you can't see nothing in it. The meat is dirty. Why? Because I came from an area where when you go on the beaches, the sand is, is white. And when the sun hits it, it, it is so white, it's it kind of a bluish white. The water it is turquoise blue. Just absolutely beautiful. I remember when I took my family down uh, in the early 2000s and we were flying over several hundred feet up in the air. They could look out the window and look down 10, 15 feet of water and you could look at the bottom of the ocean just as they're looking at this. Now, Brother Naaman, that was his response. He said, this dirty water, Jordan? <laughs> He said, sure enough, there's some better water around here that I could take a swim in. Now, uh, but, but, but before we get to that, just so you know I know how to exegete, let me call your attention to a couple of issues uh, in here. Uh, somebody, uh, um, Naaman, uh, I, again, uh, verses 11, I think it is uh, through um, 12, 11 and 12, uh, that was his argument. Uh, uh, the Jordan is dirty, and everybody knows that. There are some better places, cleaner places. Uh, my pride would not permit me to go into Jordan and think, okay. Uh, ver look, look at, uh, begin now, uh, at verse, jump down to verse 15. Jump down to, to verse 15. He says, um, and he returned to the man of God. That is after he had uh, dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. And, and by the way, somebody suggested that it was an unnamed little girl in Syria that had him to go to Samaria. Uh, she was uh, insignificant. It was the servant uh, that we don't even know his name either who, who sided up to, 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 to Naaman and said, Naaman, if he had asked you to do something great, uh, wouldn't you do it? He said, now, uh, why don't you at least try what he said? You ain't got nothing to lose. All right? But when he went, and, and I can't help myself, but point this out to you. Look at that, 40, what we call 14b. He said, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. Yeah. Did you get that? He was clean. Yeah. In other words, in other words, uh, his flesh was absolutely perfect. Yeah. Then in verse 15, he came back and tried to offer uh, Elisha, Elisha some gifts. I, 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 Elisha said no. He said, um, uh, he said, because, here's what. He said, now I know. Are you with me? That there is no God, listen to what he said, in all the earth, but the one in Israel. Amen. <laughs> he said, now, therefore, I pray you take a blessing from me. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Zary, I, I got... I got mixed emotions about it, but I'm going to say this anyhow. I'll edit it out. <laughs> you remember last week, one of the things that we said is that ministries in the kingdom of God are not for sale? Mm -hmm. Amen. I, 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 you see, so, there is something about us homo sapiens. <laughs> uh, uh, we, uh, we just don't want to be obligated to nobody. Ah, so if you do something for me, I feel like I gotta pay you for it. 
Uh, so, so that I, I don't owe you nothing. All right. Um, but in ministry, it's a very, it's a very delicate kind of a thing. And, and for years, you know, folk would come up to me and says, uh, uh, Pastor, um, would you know take this or want to give you this? And I, you know, I kind of put it off. Uh, the late brother Robert Talent, when he was uh, D O N. Director of Missions at our association. He said, Fernando, he said, uh, never rob somebody of a blessing when they want to give you a blessing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, the man of God ought not to have his hands held out all of the time. Mm -hmm. But if somebody wants to bless him, yeah. mm -hmm. he ought to take that blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, but when Elijah said, no, no, no. Uh, uh, but 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 uh, now let, let's go on. There, there's another thing that I, I I like to address before before we get into the practical application. Um, he he um, he asked in verse um, um, in verse 17. He says, um, "Please give your servants two mules of dirt." That's an interesting request uh, of, of dirt. Uh, uh, for, for, for he said, your servant will henceforth, from this point on, uh, will not offer burnt offering nor sacrifice to any other God but the Lord of Israel. Now, it is said that transferring holy dirt uh, from one place to the other was not an unusual occurrence uh, during this time. And, and, and what, what Naaman was really asking was this. Can I take two mule loads of dirt so I can take it over to Syria and build an altar unto the Lord God of Israel so that I can continue my worship over there? Now, it gets, it gets stickier. Look at uh, verse 18. Verse 18 says now, uh, he said, I'm going to ask you to forgive me when I go into the house of Raman and worship there and bow down. Okay, let, let me paraphrase. Naaman was saying, I'm a Christian. But what I want your permission to do is to continue to worship the God that I've been worshiping all of my life before I found Jesus. Amen. Was that what he was saying? Yeah. I, I, not necessarily. Uh, uh, probably what he was saying is, remember now, uh, the scripture says in verse 1 that, that he was a mighty man of valor, right? And it was through him that, that, that God had given victory to Syria. Now, here's, here, here is the interpretation. The best interpretation is that as, as a man of valor, he did not <coughs> relinquish his position in the government when he went over to Samaria to be healed. He's going back to that same responsibility. And as part of his responsibility, he might need to go into the house of Raman and do some, uh, some stuff as, as, as part of his, uh, uh, as his rank, <coughs> as his role, as his everything. <coughs> But what he was saying to Elijah, Eli Elijah, Elijah, I want you to know that this is just part of my job. I, it is not part of my spirit. In other words, my spirit now belongs to Yahweh. I will worship him forever. But I got to do these things to keep my job. That's what he was saying. Now, with that in mind, let's go back and talk about some... Uh, uh, some things in in general here. Um, seven ducks in a muddy stream. The question is, let's talk about healing. 
Back in the back in the eighties, we used to have what we call working agreement with uh, associations in the South. Dr. Leon Boyd was a guy who came up at one point and uh, and uh, he was helping us with some things at Southside Baptist Church. And he said to me, he's a pastor. He says, if I were back in the pastorate, he said, one of the things that I would do is I would have a healing service. And I look at him and as, as, as though, have you gone crazy? Uh, have you forgotten that you're Southern Baptist? Uh, Southern Baptists don't do healing service. But let me tell you, we ought to. Uh, did you get that? We ought to. Uh, because um, God is still in the healing business. Now, 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 let me talk about some areas of life that folk need to be healed from. Uh, basically, when we talk about healing ministry, our minds immediately flip to physical illness, mm -hmm. and I need to get rid of whatever is here. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a real part of what we have to deal with every day. Why? Because of sin. When sin entered into the world, a whole lot of mess came in with it. Yes, sir. And you and I are still suffering the consequences of it. But did you know that there are also some emotional healing that need to take place? Amen. Some folk who are messed up, for the use of a better terminology, emotionally. They don't know whether up is up or down is down, over is over or under is under. They are so twisted emotionally that, that they really cannot function in life. And one of the things that we have learned in, in life is that Sometimes what happens is our spirituality affects all of these other areas of life. Some folk have, have some physical illness. My stomach is all messed up. My, my, my nerve is twisted. My emotion is off. It is because you are out of sync with God. Amen. Yet your alignment with God and all of these things will begin to fall in place Amen. most of the time. So there is physical illness, there is emotional illness, and then there is spiritual healing that needs to take place. Amen. And I have already alluded to that, that sometimes it is so intricately entwined, we cannot, uh, we really cannot separate one from the other. Amen. I remember back in the 70s, um, back in the late 70s, uh, it was then Memorial Hospital of Burlington County. Um, the clergy association um, advocated um, pastoral ministry in the hospital. The hospital said, we can't afford it. So the association said, I tell you what, we will, we will raise some money, uh, we will volunteer our time for one year, and, and, and you see what happened. And, and if it's valuable, then you fund it. If it's not, we just discard it. Let me tell you, ever since, there's been a permanent chaplain yes. in that hospital. Amen. Because if folk figured out that, 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 that ministers, clergy, spiritual people has as much impact upon the healing yes. of folk yes. as the medicine does. Amen. Because you see, we are, we are spiritually made. We are made to connect with God. So the question is, what kind of a healing you need? Do you need physical? Do you need emotional? Do you need spiritual? Let me, then I have to ask the other question. How was Naaman healed? Think about it. Was he healed because he went and dipped himself in that dirty river? No. No. He was healed when he, he came <coughs> about to exercise what I call complete and total obedience to the word of God. Amen. What did Elisha tell him to do? Go duck yourself. And by the way, I looked up the word duck and somebody said the English language is something else. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and then all kind of uh, pictures of birds begin to show up. Uh, 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 and, and then you add an ed on it, and it becomes a verb. 
Uh, so, 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 uh, when was Naaman healed? When he went down the first time, he came up. Naaman looked at himself and said, mm, things look the same. The fifth time, it ain't nothing changed. Things look the same. But when he went down the seventh time, mm. hallelujah, mm. and came up, yes, sir. he looked at his hand. He looked at his stomach. Yeah. He looked at his, he looked at his, he looked at everything. And the word of God said that his skin was like that of a little child. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, 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 let me ask you a question. Except for some unusual circumstances. Have, 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 have you ever seen a little child, and the inference is not to a toddler or a, to a, a newborn. Their skin is so smooth, it's so soft, it's so, it's so, it's so precious. You just want to sit there all day and stroke it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what the Word of God says. Whoever is born of God is a new creation. I like that. It's a new creation. Not, not now. Now, in, in, in science, here is that. Uh, um, uh, here's what I, I I learned. There are two words that we use very frequently. One is to make, and the other is to create. Mm. You know the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is. To create something, you have to have nothing next yes. to bring about something. Yes. Yeah. And no science has, a scientist has ever been able to accomplish that. Amen. But God, ah. in his power, yes, sir. one day said, let there be yes. out of nothingness, and there was. Yes. Are you with me? Yes, sir. To make means that you can take what a God has already created yeah. and formed into something new to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good, yeah. brother. So, <laughs> what the Word of God says, that, 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 that uh, whoever is born of God is a new creation. Mm. In other words, God knew that if he patched you off, yeah. Lord yeah. have mercy. You're going to mess up later on. So what he did, he took the old you and got rid of it. And he brought in the new you. Yeah. Now, now I, had to, I had to ask myself another question, which we don't like to deal with. How does God heal? Hmm. How does God heal? From a human perspective, <coughs> if I am struggling with whatever I am struggling with, uh, hopefully Mrs. Downs, and hopefully Elizabeth and Jennifer and Daniel and the rest of them would like to keep me around. <laughs> you heard what I said? <laughs> Hopefully. That's the human, selfish nature of faith. So here's what we pray Lord, fix whatever needs to be fixed. Okay? Take away that TB, uh, cure that cancer. I heal that high blood pressure. And on and on the list goes. You, 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 you know. They take care of these things. But sometimes God sees fit to do that. Mm -hmm. You know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I, by the way, I, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it out there. Put it out there. Um, sometimes it takes more than prayer to do that. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you, you just don't... Uh, I'm not saying that God cannot do it. Yeah. Uh, but, but somebody said God helps those who help themselves. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you're struggling with some issues that uh, 
that you need to pick, seek some medical help. You ought, you ought to go ahead and do that. Okay? God can use them too. But the reality of the matter is the doctors can offer prescriptions. The doctors can do surgery. The doctors can do a whole lot of stuff. But after that, only God can heal. Ah. Okay? That's just so we need to, just so we need to understand that. Okay? So, so sometimes God in his mercy and in his divine providence brings about healing physically. Uh, and when I say physically, in the flesh, uh, Naaman came up out of the water, and the word of God said that his, his, his flesh was like that of a, little, of a little baby. But sometimes God chooses, listen to this, to do what I call the perfect healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know what the perfect healing is, don't you? Yeah. The perfect healing is to say, come home to me. Yeah. 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 We don't like to deal with death. In fact, we don't like to. We don't even like to talk to about it. Uh, we, we, we get these highfalutin names for it. Well, he transitioned, <laughs> or, 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 or he passed, or, or, or whatever. Uh, you know, he dead. <laughs> That's the word. He dead. From a human perspective, he's dead. But now watch this. For the unbeliever, he's dead. Because he ain't coming back no more to do nothing on this side of eternity or on that side of eternity. Amen. But for the believer, yeah. hallelujah, he's a born to see. Because on that great getting up morning, one of these days the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ will get up. And if I'm around, hallelujah, I'm grossing wings and get up here to meet him. I told you this before, and I'm wondering whether I ought to say it again. I remember my dear old mother. Those of you who know her know that she was just short and white. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Y'all call it fat. <laughs> but old Cassandra knew how to get around. Praise the Lord. I remember those days when I was when I was just a little fella. Ah. Uh, Somebody would be having a baby on the other side of town. Uh, we didn't have motorcycles back then on the island. We didn't have cars. We didn't have all of the luxuries that they had these, but we had horses. And somebody would saddle a horse and, and, and uh, bring it uh, to, to Fernando's house. And the houses were built on stilts, if you remember, uh, if you know. Uh, the houses were built on stilts, and there were steps going up to the stilts. And, they pulled that horse up to that uh, up to the step, and old Cass, bless her heart, she would just put one foot on, bam, she would be over on that in that saddle in a minute, just like that. But as she grew older, mm -hmm. some things began to happen. Mm -hmm. Diabetes set in, mm -hmm. high blood pressure set in. She lost the toe, and then she lost the leg, mm -hmm. and then she lost both of them. And old Cass used to be able to give directions, Reverend. Yeah. I mean, she loved to run things. She <laughs> gave direction, and she'd be telling you how to do it. But I remember she'd sit in that old wheelchair and just kind of a spin from side to side and begin to give direction. But you know, today she's healed. Yeah. She is healed. I, I believe that when I get to go, I would see her running around on those two legs because God, what, what God did, he restored everything that yes. was wrong. Yeah. Yes. That's the kind of a God that we serve. Yes. And see, you need to understand that. And you need to understand that he is capable today of doing what he did yesterday. Yes. Yes. All right? Yes. Now, in the interest of time, let me bring this thing home. I want to suggest a couple of things that happened to, to, to Brother Naaman when he got himself converted. Praise the Lord. Somebody says verses 15 through 19 uh, contains one of the greatest texts uh, of, of Gentile conversion. Uh, we know that it was through Israel that God determined from the foundation of the world back in Genesis uh, chapter 12, you remember the call of Abraham to bless the world through, uh, through Israel. This reality became real in the life of Naaman through two, two insignificant people. 
a little girl, we don't even know her name, and a servant, we don't even know her name. Mm -hmm. But I want you to notice how Naaman responded after he came up out of the water and he became clean. First of all, it leads to what we call a confession of faith. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Naaman came back to Elijah's house. He went away angry. Yes. Hallelujah. But he came back happy. Yes. He said, Elijah, I want you to know that I found something new. Yes. What I found is that there is only one God in the earth. Yes. His name is Yahweh. Yes. And he lives in Israel. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Romans 10 and verse 9 says, if you will believe in your heart yes. and confess with your mouth Amen. the Lord Jesus, yes. you will be saved. Ah, uh, Naaman realized that there is only one God and uh, that God is in Israel and through him and him alone healing is to be found. Oh, I wish I had time this morning. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that there is no name given among men Amen. whereby we must be saved, Amen. but through the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Naaman <clears throat> came forth what we, what we call a confession of faith. Um... But then it, it, it leads to something else. It leads to some, what I call some new commitments. The commitment to be generous. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you know something? Let's, 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 just be, let's, let's just be frank now. 21st century Christian folks, for the most part, can become the most pinchy group of people you can find anywhere. <laughs> just kind of a look out for me. I, I don't care about you. I, you know, I may see your need. I, I don't want to mess with it. You know, I, I'm, I'm just thinking, listen, listen to what, uh, listen to what uh, uh, Naaman did. He went back to Elisha's house. And, 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 and first of all, he says that uh, um, I, I finally found out that there is, there is no God, no real God, except the one that is found in Samaria. Yeah. Now he said, as a token of my appreciation uh, uh, for what God has done through you, would you take a gift from me? Now, <clears throat> I, I think about not only Naaman, but I think about Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. You remember when Zacchaeus got uh, got saved? Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he stood up. And we don't know all of the discussion that went down, <laughs> but, 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 but he finally decided to voluntarily say, I'm going to give back. In fact, I'm going to give half of what I give. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to give. I'm just going to give. Listen, you know what the scripture says about giving? The scripture says that it is more blessed to give yeah. than it is to receive. Right. Listen, I, even we... we we had a seminar. Uh, we had a seminar seminar here uh, several years ago, and a doctor stood right here, and, and, and what he was he was talking about healing, mm -hmm. and, and he said, "You want to know how to heal? Just begin to give away oh, stuff." Yeah. He, he he said, "We have found out that the people who give are more healthy mm -hmm. than the people who grab," mm -hmm. and he said, "We have also found out." that the people who give more mm. are healthier than the people who give less. <laughs> and and, and then, he, then he went a step further. He said, the folk who give at 10% and above uh. are greater blessed than those who give nothing. Uh. And I said, my Lord, uh. ain't nothing new under the heaven. Uh. And God knew what he was talking about. I said, God wants to bless us. So, so what happened is when 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 Naaman got healed, he he got he got a spirit of generosity, but he also got a spirit of worship. Uh, here's what he said to Elijah. He said, Elijah. He said, Now, would you do me a favor? Would you permit me, if you would, to take two mules of dirt, 
from here to my home place. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to build me an altar to the Lord. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be funny here, but serious. All right? We talk about church folk. Let's talk about church folk. Uh, there are, there, 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 um, there, I think there are three kinds of us. Okay? <clears throat> In fact, just last, last week, I got a letter, and, and, and Kate looked at it and said, how are we going to respond to this? I said, I'll take care of it next week. <laughs> this fellow write me a letter. He says, I am a social butterfly. And he said, I just want to know uh, about your church. He said, what time are your services? Uh, do you have a Sunday school? And he said, do you have a coffee hour? <laughs> okay. Uh, there are those social butterflies who just kind of a hop from churches to churches but never settle down anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and then we encourage people quote, to join the church, whatever that, you know, whatever that means. You notice I have not uh, overly pushed that these days uh, 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 um, because uh, here's, here's what I found out. The other group, which we call the permanent visitors. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> kind of a do better than the members. Mm -hmm. The permanent visitors, you, you can almost depend on them more mm -hmm. than, than, than you can. And it's very interesting. We have a saying around here. The permanent visitors will, will be permanent until they join. <laughs> <laughs> And the week after the join, you don't see him no more. <laughs> listen, li you hear, do you hear what Naaman is saying? He said, I I'm not only declaring that Yahweh is my Lord, but he said, I'm declaring that I will worship Yahweh on a continual basis. I have just joined the kingdom, but I'm going to take me some dirt this is holy dirt over here. Uh, we ain't got nothing like this over in Syria. So I'm going to carry some and I'm going to build me an altar yeah. so that every day I can bow down to the Jehovah God and worship him. And I am so glad that God we serve live in the United States, live in China, live in Africa, live in everywhere. You can stand it. He said, he said, he said, I want to worship God because he has done so much for me. Amen. And I'm thinking about where God done take us, took us from Amen. and brought us to. Amen. And we look back and we begin to take God for granted yes. every day yes. that your feet place on the ground yes. and your body stands upright. You ought to say thank you. Amen. For being God. Time is gone and I got to finish up here. But, but the one thing that he said in addition to that, he said, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Uh, when I do what I have to do. But I want you to know that my heart is right. And I'm so glad. I am so glad this morning that I serve a God who makes me a promise. Because the day that I confessed my sins to him yeah. and gave my life to him, he came with his Holy Spirit of God, the word of God said, and sealed my soul unto the day of redemption. Yeah. And the word of God says, what, whatsoever God has given unto the Son, Jesus Christ, or whatever God has claimed, nothing, nothing can pluck them out of the hand of my Father. Listen to what the scripture says. He, that is God, mm -hmm. he is faithful. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. And he is just. Yes, sir. And he is able to forgive yes. if we confess yes. our sins. Yes, sir. That does not mean that he gives us a license right. to go do nothingness. Right. But you know something? When we do what we got to do, we realize that it is an offense on the law. And we come in confession. God is so gracious. He is so gracious. Now, 
your eyes are all blown. What, what, what kind of a healing do you need in your life today? When God intervenes <coughs> and touches your life through the power of his Holy Spirit, how are you going to respond to it? God may come and say to you, you need to do this. My tendency is, but Lord, there is an alternative. God didn't give us an alternative. He said, do this, and you will be free. My prayer for each of us is simply this, that we will be able to say, yes, Lord, and be free. Father, in this time of invitation, we're going to thank you for what you're going to do. You are so gracious. You are so good. You are so merciful. Pray that our spirits will be linked with your spirit. Simply to say yes to what you're calling us to do. Take this time of invitation. Glorify your name, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymn now that you need to turn to the hymn of invitation as we stand to sing. I don't know where you are in your spiritual journey. But I know that until you get things right with him, everything else is going to be out of sync. Have you trusted him as your personal savior? If the answer is no, why not do it today? And there are some things you may be holding out on God. Why not say yes to him today and surrender it? This is your opportunity. I'm waiting at the front. If God is speaking to you, step on call. 416.
publicly. I hope you talk to them. Let's get it set before we leave in the meantime. Just remember, he's counting on you to make him look good. When we walk in his will, 